Hey there, Ryan Kingsling here. Now, in my last video, I talked about the clay brush um, with actual clay and talking about how it's designed to really uh, imitate or replicate to some experience uh, sculpting with, let's, let's say, a wood tool that you put a little clay on. And now what I want to do is get into ZBrush and um, show you a little bit more about how that works. So I did a quick sculpt of this. This is about a half hour, 45 minutes. And I'm going to show you or replicate this right now with you. The idea being to give you a sense of how to create your own type of workflow and start to create work that really is your own work, your personal work, your own style. Because I've gotten a lot of emails, a lot of uh, questions about how to avoid having uh, ZBrush uh, sculpts look like everybody else's ZBrush sculpt. So in some ways that is just knowing how tools work, like how clay buildup works or how clay works. And then in other parts, this is actually knowing how to layer processes on. One quick example we can see right at the end. So you can see here where the model, the hair uh, for the beard is all very simple, very homogeneous. And then I enter into a very specific stage where I modify the clay brushes to help establish chunks. And then once I've got those chunks, then I have another stage, totally separate stage, you know, because for example, this is all still melding into each other. I have a totally separate stage where I come in with the snake hook brush and I literally pull these little pieces or tendrils out. Now when I pull these tendrils out, they're quite rough, so I have to know in advance that I'm going to also use the move brush with AccuCurve to give them points. And then I have to know in advance that I'm also going to use clay buildup to integrate this and start to give these guys a little bit more vitality. Now, this is something that I'm aware of, I've studied, I've done you know, my homework, and I've, I've been doing this for a very long time. And this is what my ZBrush certification program is really designed to help you understand how to build your own workflow, your own combination of features so that it has your special look. Now, let's me uh, start off with another, you know what, in fact, let's do this. I'm going to uh, take this all the way down, back to the base mesh, back to the simple sphere. That way we have the exact same piece. I'm going to clone this out, and I'm going to work with this. Now, the goal is to be able to use clay buildup or the clay brush to start to just immediately get to work. So make sure symmetry is on and I'm gonna say just start to sculpt right away. Let me reset all the brushes because I made lots of modifications to them. So I'm gonna just reset them and then start over. Let's get ourselves back in with the clay buildup. So there we go. I'm just adding clay here and then I'm gonna press Alt and start to push in a little bit. I'm just gonna see what happens. Just let this thing work. Now, I'm adding clay, I'm subtracting clay. This is a general process that we go through. I'm gonna pull some area out for the neck and then I'm gonna pull some out, hoping that eventually becomes like, let's say, um, the shoulder area. In some cases, it helps to use the move brush just to quickly establish things. And then, of course, we need to get in and use um, Dynamesh to help us really start to make sense of form. So I'm going to put that at a really low resolution. Very small. And just see what happens. Come back in with clay buildup. Lower that draw size. See if I can use these polygons. I'll build form. And then I'll 
push form in but I'm not attached to anything in any major way just gonna see where this goes you can probably hear my Wacom uh, tablet is just constantly hitting that form hitting that surface I'm being very loose with how I approach this. Going for kind of a Rodan look like we saw earlier, or a little bit of a Walt Whitman look. Uh, I'm going to Dynamesh this one more time, and then I'm going to turn Dynamesh off, and I'm going to start dividing this. And now, what, we're, what you're going to see is a bit of a dance, a dance between move brush, the clay brush, probably clay buildup, and the standard brush. And really what these are doing is these imitating when I put a piece of clay down and then when I'm cutting in with the edge of my wooden tool. So the standard brush serves as a knife. Um, and you can see that if I go in the standard brush right now and I just press Alt and push in you see it's really good at establishing these kind of forms and some kind of line yeah Let's start to separate that and then back in with clay buildup to start to establish and then over into move brush to just see what we might need Okay. Now, for the ears, the best way to do them is you just mask out a portion, invert that mask, sorry, don't invert the mask, but use the move brush and pull the topology behind it. There really is no better way than doing this. It's super fast, super easy. I do it every single time exactly this way. Now, you can then invert it now and adjust the shape a little bit start to pull that out perhaps but there you go okay back in with clay buildup the secret with clay buildup is to keep it focused on form and uh, broad planes at a certain point clay buildup becomes less uh, important to us. It becomes actually a bit of a hindrance uh, because it's so aggressive. But if we use it to do things like, say, separate out the, um, what is this, the external angle of the frontal bone, external angular process of the frontal bone, the um, frontal cephanoidal process, if we use that to then help us separate that from the uh, temporal muscle and from the zygomatic and, and all of that, then it's a real powerful tool. There's a lot that we can do with it. Uh, I'm going to really dig in a little bit here to get the orbit of the eye. And I'm going to be looking at that from below. That's good. Let me dig in. Notice that I'm also, when using clay brush, I'm using it at a very low subdivision level, and, I'm, and it's, it's chunking for me. So this is really good, but we're going to eventually abandon this and then chunk at a higher subdivision level. Also, you may have caught this before, but I'm going to let symmetry exist here because really my primary focus is it's just creating some semblance of, of vitality and life. So it's going to be a little bit before I start worrying about um, asymmetry and things like that. I'm going to put a little bit in there for the zygomatic. Get that zygomatic to really flow in. Separate the zygomatic and the temporalis. Start to really get a bit more in there, that angular process. And maybe switch over to the move brush and really help that be the, the highest point. Okay. 
Now I'm going to divide this and I'm going to keep doing this dance. Whoops. Clay build up. Now, one of the things that we want to be doing, because the key thing is, is we want to be learning how to create our own style, our own um, type of work, so it looks just like us. So we can be using different brushes, but we can also just start to modify some of the brushes and the features here. So one of the key things to know about the clay brush is that depth is a very important setting. So for example, if the depth is set to zero, I'm going to get almost no effect, but if it's set to 55, I get quite a dramatic effect. One of the tricks that we can do is we can come in and set the embed at kind of a little bit high, but you set your intensity low. Then it starts to build slowly, really slowly. And this is really beneficial when you come in and divide it and get this with a few more polygons. So we're at 88,000, and now I'm going to start to focus on these um, some of these smaller structures and their integration and uh, maybe we divide this again because clay buildup is topologically independent so we can get away with having more resolution in there. We can also come into stroke lazy mouse and we take our lazy step and set it to 0 0.05 and it'll be a bit of a smoother stroke. So I'm going to set my embed back to 20, but lower my Z intensity to 12. That way it's going to be a little softer. And I'll be practicing this policy of put clay and then press Alt. Put clay and then press Alt. Boom, boom. Get the frontal process. Okay, maybe we start to put in a little bit of the eye. Increase the embed to 30. And this just creates a little bit of a softer feel to everything. Separate the nasal bone from the lateral cartilage from the Alar cartilage from the nostril. Okay, sometimes you got to use move to kind of get things where you want a little bit. And then back over here to clay build up. Start to separate. This is the this is the alar facial juncture, this little triangle, so I'm going to kind of put that in there and build up some of that infraorbital triangle. should come out about right there so then we get our little soul patch and then we get the stuff coming out of the chin and again I'm gonna work to just kind of create simplified forms and not worry about the asymmetry or or um, the symmetrical quality of it right now because we have that as part of the the stage that's just a stage that I go through where I get rid of that uh, Let's turn that back down. There we go. And uh, we probably can start to work on the ear a little bit and start to separate out that head from the neck. And uh, at this point, 
the standard brush becomes a really useful tool to kind of dig in a little bit and then we come back with clay buildup to help integrate or maybe we need to smooth something out so I'm going to come back in here and put the nuchal line the, put the trapezius this is the descending portion of the trapezius So maybe now we can also start to create some sort of hair. Okay, and again, I'm not adjusting any major uh, settings at this point. I could and I will, but it's not essential right now because all I'm trying to do is create some some life quickly something that has vitality and that I can start to kind of um, work with. That's what I'm trying to create. So here shortly, I'll start worrying about giving it its own do. My uh, younger brother has a saying that the it's not a forehead that's a five head because <laughs> he's uh, missing some hair. Um, of course, he was making fun of me at the time. All right, so we've got some life and something that reads quite well from a distance, right? Now we're just playing here. We're just kind of seeing what we can kind of get done. Um, so everything here is kind of impressionistic. We're focused on creating some illusion. I'm going to create the orbit of the eye and the lower eyelid. And I'm doing that in a sculptural way, the way sculptors do. They'll just put like a blob of clay in there and, um, and really get the roundness. And then, uh, let's say, start to kind of establish some of that internal anatomy. So let's get the orbit there a little deeper and uh, really deep but then kind of pull it around this is a a really important element and there we go just carving out that glabella and the nasal bone separating the glabella superciliary superciliary arch from what's called the supraorbital margin making sure the infraorbital margin is there, making sure that frontal cephanoidal process is there. Digging in for shadow. Adding some layering to this. Digging in. It's saving it for us. Layer of clay, press Alt, and integrate it. Layer of clay. And let's get that ear in there really dig in to create the conch shell and then dig in to create the ear holes separate the there we go create the tragus the anti tragus create the little notch and then get that a little bit of that pushed up that's good so this clay brush is just so powerful. I mean, see how it helps me just, I'm just pressing Alt and cutting in, and it does so much to integrate. It's just a, just a crazy,
beautiful brush. Just like with, a, say, a wooden tool, a little bit of clay just blends things in. I use it so much for this structural phase. Okay, back in. Make sure the orbit of the eye is there. And make sure its measurements are within range. And then I'll throw a little bit of fat in and see how simple it is. Throw that fat in. And then integrate it, tie it in a little bit. bit of just wrinkles in there and maybe we want to pull this down a little bit and I pull it down by just adding form in there not a big deal move the external angle down a little bit Now a large part of this phase has to do with making sure that you've got simplified forms. So some of this stuff off to the side, that can really start to screw me up if I'm not careful. And uh, let me come in with a standard brush, or move brush, and I'm just going to make sure that that has a proper archway back. So we have some life in here, some vitality. And almost all of this is just the clay brush, just a little bit of it being pushed around and uh, the move brush and standard brush. OK, so now what we want to do, this is all like a rough stage. Now it's not over, because anybody can get at this point, right? There's anybody can get at this point and, and mirror what I've got here, and that's great. Now what I want to do is start to add something that's a little bit special to me and into the way in which I think about these things. And that's largely going to come from the, the tools that I layer on to start to solve some of these problems. I need to quickly get this hair. separated from the beard and separated from the bone. I was getting a little, I was conflating them into one. Okay. All right, so then I'm going to come in now with my knife tool, like say a standard brush or like slash three, and I'm going to start to use this in a way that's more specific to me. Real impressionistic. Let's come in, get a nostril in there. We're only at 300,000, so I'm going to, I'm hesitant to divide more because um, my job right now is to make this as kind of as uh, expressionistic as possible, really. So this is line work, you could call it, technically. With the line work, sometimes you got to go in and adjust it with the clay buildup, because the uh, slash 3 brush has displace, which is an, it's an algorithm that's very similar to standard. So, you know, it's a little bit more advanced, but it's very similar to the standard brush, so the topology can go to hell in a handbasket really 
really fast. Okay. Now back in with slash three. Just that little bit of work added some life, right? So I need to keep going here a little bit. Turn symmetry off. Turn symmetry back on, and let's start to cut and and uh, create some line work here. Okay. Now, line work is one stage, and um, and uh, there's a there's a lot more to do, basically. A lot more to do. So as much as this line work has the potential, even if I was to turn symmetry off, the next phase of this is actually really important. We need to come back in with clay buildup with symmetry off, and we need to start to establish some planes. But now we need to take control of the clay buildup brush so that I can get little tendrils of shapes in there. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go down to, um, let's say, tablet pressure. And I'm going to lower size so it's more sensitive to size. Okay, and I'm going to increase the Z intensity so that it's generally very hard. It's definitely going to have some impact. And I'm going to harden that, yeah. And I'm going to come into depth and into Z intensity. I'm going to increase the intensity. There we go. There we go. It's a small little change, but it creates some really cool patterns. And it gives me like another way to work with this. Um, now, what I'm doing and the patterning that I'm going to be working with and I'm thinking about, this is not something that m a lot of us artists today just have sublimated, that we just have in our unconscious. This kind of patterning of the Baroque or uh, Rococo world, um, you know, just doesn't exist at the same level today. So I'm just going to do some stuff real quick, um, but you have to keep in mind that this is something that you would want to be studying. You know, this is a f this is entirely a field of study, but these little tendrils that are able to pop up here, this is from me knowing the brush. This is from me knowing tablet pressure and what to do with Z intensity, not just size, but what to do with Z intensity here and here. These are the kinds of things that get really important, and um, why I, I uh, uh, why I developed the CERT program to begin with is to kind of pass this kind of information on and develop a, a series of people that are just crazy trained. So there, man, this brush is like the curl brush. It just it's just creating curls out of thin air. Mm-hmm. Okay, almost done with this kind of first stage. And I think I'm going to integrate this a little bit. And okay. You see how that comes in and feathers nicely with what I had done before? Whoops, that dug in too far. That dug into his brain. Sometimes the materials make it hard to see. 
but layering this brush over that um, that behavior with the slash three is giving me a much more advanced pattern really just beautiful quick simple can't beat it type of feel now there's still another stage to this so bear with me I just want to get some at this stage really what I'm thinking of is planes I want to get instead of this homogeneous I want to get I want to get some extra level so I'm gonna up the ante a bit and stroke yeah that's probably okay and I'm gonna press alt Yeah, and a little bit more in there. There we go. That's starting to work. And let's homogenize this a little bit, pressing Alt. Okay, now symmetry back on, reset all brushes. Let me show you a couple of more stages to this because I'm quickly building form here. But we do have more work. So I'm going to come into clay and I'm going to try another little modification. I'm going to set depth to one. And when I set depth to one, it does something really cool. It starts to act more as this kind of... Um, how do I say it? And I'm going to add an alpha in here. But it, it starts to flatten and integrate form a little bit more. Another approach that people will sometimes use is H polish. So where did the H polish go? Uh, and uh, let me see, just press H. There we go, and lower the Z intensity. This will help to even out and iron out some of that craziness that the uh, standard brush gives, or the clay brush gives, sorry. But it leaves some of it in there to really help with the look and the randomness of things. There we go. So we've got some nice differentiation. And back into clay. And I'll go really tiny on this. Tip defining point. Okay. All right, there we go. Now back into clay buildup, and I'm going to lower the Z intensity and just hit a few things to put some of that randomness back in so it doesn't look that clean because it was starting to look pretty clean, right? a little divot in there and there we go
integrate the nostril a little better. That alar cartilage. Okay. All right. A couple more steps, and we're almost done with this. Just a couple more steps for us. Now, I'm just doing this out of my head, so you'll see I'm occasionally going to come in and kind of rethink some areas. Um, but just pulling this guy right out of my head, trying to see if I can show you how cool um, the clay brush can be and how much you can do with it, but also how much it imitates clay in the real world. I think that'll work. Okay. Now, we need a little bit more line work, maybe at these edges, a little bit more care um, for that. And we also need to start to separate or distinguish little tendrils. So the next step for me is really going to be coming in here to the snake hook brush. And I'm going to come in with this little square alpha, which is alpha 28, I think. And I'm just going to turn symmetry off and start to grab pieces. Now, the way snake hook works is it depends on how your it's basically going to pull um, it's going to pull hair basically perpendicular to the direction in which you're viewing it. So if you want to pull out a hair that's coming all the way back into his into the body, then you do that. And let's go with clay buildup. And I'm going to do this a little different. We're going to we're going to actually get rid of any sense of shoulders. and just focus on some kind of neck. Okay. Dun dun dun. Oops. Didn't do the other side. So, what I can do is go to the highest subdivision level mask this stuff off mask everything off that I want to keep right and then I gotta unmask these things and I can use uh, mask lasso there we go and we come down here into deformation and we say smart resim Crazy. That didn't work. So I'm going to undo, turn symmetry back on, and I'm going to do this even simpler than before. go and then go back on up okay so neck sternocleido da 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 And here, standard brush, which I haven't used a whole lot, right? And then back in with clay buildup to fix it and align it. And then on up. Yeah. 
So. There we go. Now, on to the next step, which is snake hook. And start to pull these tendrils out. Symmetry is off. And I'll pull a little bit of a hair out there, and then I'll pull that. And then that's going to go in a little bit, that's going to go in, and then that guy. And then uh, I may start to lift. And once I've started to pull these little tendrils out, which I can also do up here. And in fact, I'm going to change that alpha a little bit, see if I can, if this stringy step will actually add something interesting. Yeah, it does, but it needs to be a little thicker. So let me try this guy. And I'll do this from above. Yeah, there we go. And mm, that's not so nice. Smooth that in a little bit. There you go. Now, this is cool, but the key to the next phase is knowing the system, having a workflow, move brush and accu curve. So now these guys are going to give me the tips that I need. They're going to give me this level of form that's a little bit higher, a little bit better. Not just that random, not just that simple shape. And lower that draw size. And there you go. You can even just pull straight out, bypass that snake hook brush, right? You could. It's quite powerful. And this kind of layering on of effects can go a long ways towards really giving you your own kind of quality. Now once we've done this we do still need to do some sort of integration. So I'll come in with the clay buildup brush again and now with depth I'm gonna set this depth down to 5 and I'll leave the Z intensity but this will give me a chance to kind of round things. And then I'm going to set this back at 20 and back at 34 and see if I can't get some backup for this piece. And there we go. So within a short period of time, I've used only a couple of features. So I've used what? Um, move. Clay, standard, 
I've used masking, snake hook. Okay, the same brush as everybody else has, but I'm able to get a quality that's a little bit more mine. It's a little bit more me, mostly from the layering of these effects and understanding simple modification, shift, Z intensity, draw size, embed, accu curve, and really getting in and kind of working the system, so to speak. Now, I've been doing this for 10 plus uh, years, and all of that knowledge is wrapped right up into my CERT program. So, Make sure you uh, check that out today. Thank you for checking this out. And I would probably be noodling this and working this um, forever. And uh, I will talk to you later. Let's put both of these guys up. We got this guy. And then, um, where did our other guy go? It was hidden. So, here's our two dudes. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. All the best. Happy Z brushing. Make sure you check out the CERT program. Check me out at ryankingsline.com. Sign up uh, to learn more and take the 30 day challenge uh, or the challenge that we have there. Whether it's 30 days, it's going to change or vary. And uh, all the best. Talk soon.